by 1890, 90% of Naitahu were landless. In that same period, my Pākehā ancestor could win lands in a running race. As Pākehā, we don't have the tools to understand the now because we don't understand our history. I identify as Pākehā. What that means is people of white European descent, particularly um, coloniser descent. So it's a conflicted identity in that sense. Some of the stories of our ancestors carry that conflict that we sit with as Pākehā New Zealanders. That conflict of wanting it to be a different history than it actually is. It was really interesting to me when Mum told me about my ancestors, Joseph and Bessie Doyle, who had this positive relationship with Horikiri and Tinekiri Tairoa. Horikiri Tairoa was an MP for Southern Māori and was travelling a lot, and so my ancestors used to look after their property. My great-great-grandfather was known as an outspoken supporter of Māori representation in Parliament in the late 1800s, and I think it came, obviously, from that friendship. So there were people who were supporters, and one of my ancestors was a supporter of Māori representation and Māori rights, and that seemed like a positive, honourable thing. It was then really interesting for me digging deeper and finding my great-great-grandfather's obituary, and in that it said that he was a good runner and that one of the more memorable prizes that he won for winning a running race were two parcels of land on the Canterbury Plains. That was Naitahu lands, and this was in the late 1800s. By 1890, 90% of Naitahu were landless. They either didn't have any land or didn't have enough land for economic survival. And they're the very lands that his friend, Horikiri Tairoa, is fighting for justice in relation to. That challenged me to think about what I was needing or wanting my ancestors to be and what narrative I was wanting to create. Whatever I find out about my ancestors, the same for me is about what am I doing about all of this. It was actually, you know, in a place of privilege at, in a fourth year paper at Canterbury University that I first learned about Te Stiti o Waitangi. I was pissed off that I, would, I hadn't learned that stuff. We can't understand Te Tiriti itself if we don't understand this context of hundreds of years of settlement of tangata whenua and that they had all the systems in place of law, of education, health, and then understanding the process that followed, which was a complete disregard of Te Tiriti and the process of colonisation. I just felt like it was so critical to have that understanding. And so then I went into adult education where there was a need to communicate that understanding to a broader audience. So when we turn to thinking about honouring te tiriti, it's about the restoration of balance. Well, it's always been really clear that my responsibility is to be speaking to my own people, because some of the big blocks to a healthy society are Pākehā, <laughs> blocking Māori being able to pursue their own health and wellbeing. Obviously, I do stuff because I want to shift our understanding as Pākehā and our work to honour Te Tiriti, but within that, I don't step out of my Pākehā privilege. This is Drain Road, um, where I grew up in Doylston. My great-great-grandfather arrived in 1864. He was a 21-year-old Scottish farm labourer. Not long after that, he purchased land on the Canterbury Plains, land that Tangata Whenua had had relationships with for hundreds of years before. The area that he purchased was named Doylston, after him, by him, for him. There wasn't the conversation around, well, did this place already have a name? I don't know what happened with those lands. We don't own it. It says in his obituary he didn't give them back. Whether he did any restoration around that, I don't know. I got to grow up on these lands, actually having no idea <laughs> about any of the history. There's material privilege that comes from growing up on stolen lands. There's the privilege of the kids in the school books having the same colour skin as me, the same types of names. In the media, you know, my people, Pākehā, being positively portrayed. And that's the privilege, that you become the normal. 
there's a whole loss of understanding Māori ways of being in this place. You know, hundreds of years of ways of doing things that I grew up with no knowledge of. But the fact that I can succeed in a society without that knowledge, that's how privilege works. We all have a responsibility in terms of restoring balance in Aotearoa to do what we can. Things like learning about where your people came from, how they got to be here. Thinking about where do I have influence? What can I do amongst my family, amongst my community? It is about challenging your own patterns of thinking and understanding. And that's never something that you kind of tick off. I can't change the story of my ancestors, but I can try to build a different future. <laughs>